Hey folks, so today I've got a Commodore 1541C disk drive that a uh, customer has actually sent in for repair. Uh, we were discussing this over uh, email uh, correspondence, just trying to do some back and forth troubleshooting, figure out what's wrong with it. Uh, it looks like it may be something to do with the head. Uh, it's just giving us a read error when he tries to open a disk. It says file not found, and if you look into the, uh, the error response from the drive itself, it just says read error. So uh, we tried some basic things, uh, such as, you know, trying to do a format to get it to reinitialize the head. You can actually hear the head banging against the, the, the stop uh, when it tries to read. Um, but, and it, do, it does sound like it's uh, moving, but yeah, just no data coming through. So it sounds like the, the board in here is working, but it may just be something to do with the, the read write head. Um, but yeah, we've got to pull it apart and find out. Hopefully it's just as simple as a clean, but uh, these these mechanisms, the one with here, is the uh, the Mitsumi or the Neutronics, and they do have a history of failing uh, open. But um, yeah, we'll get to that first. So first of all, let's plug it in, give it a test. So we'll just jam some power and serial in there. Put that on. Yeah, sounds like it's doing stuff. We'll click on our Commodore and let's load in. A known disk. So this is WWF Super Fighter. Use this for testing all the time. You can hear as soon as I put it in, it starts firing out. So that means the uh, disk detection is working. So let's uh, see if we can get a listing. So you can hear it. It's trying to read, but then we get file not found error. So that's no good. Okay. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to skip right to testing phase, because this is exactly what we did with the uh, user. So I'm just going to put in a junk disk that I've got. I'm going to reboot our Kung Fu Flash with the diagnostics cart from World of Jani. Yani, I don't know how to pronounce it. So what we're going to do is run our alignment check. A and hit space. Let's see what it says. Huh. Track 240. Track 3. That's interesting. So it's kind of getting data. I've never seen a head at this out of alignment though. And so consistently. No, this isn't going to be out of alignment. This is uh, this is just not reading track data correctly. See, two five fives constantly is what I would expect from a dead head, or a dead read write amp on the main board, where it's getting a signal, but it doesn't have enough data to know what to do with that signal. Um, and in in the case of the dead read write amp. Um, it is getting the signal, but it's not being able to boost it, and it's just getting dud data. But I've, yeah, I've not really seen the value flickering around like that. Either way, it's not uh, reading from. Yeah, it's not reading any any proper track data, so it's not actually useful. What we'll do is we will just do. Uh, let's try the performance test because I know that attempts a format straight off the bat. And we'll see if that does anything. Yeah, read, read, read error. So that's the error that we were getting when we read the uh, the error diagnostics content from the drive. So it's definitely something internally here. But the good thing is it is returning data, which means the CPU uh, inside this guy is actually working fine. So that's positive. It's not going to be a full dead board. Okay, so let's let's crack her open. I never really recommend that anyone use any of my videos as a guide, but uh, if you are planning on doing this, just be aware that the 1541, the big boxy ones like this, the, the original 1541 and the 1541C, both have mains voltage coming into them and have a very large transformer here. So only open this if you are well, confident and competent uh, to be working around mains voltage, because there is a severe risk of electric shock if you delve any deeper into this. So let's have a look. 
mean, first of all, the disk is plugged in, so that's positive. <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, the read write head there. It's all original capacitors and components. Doesn't look like anything is really going on inside here. It's actually like pretty original. That's good. We could do with a little bit of a cleanup. I'll give it a bit of a dusting. That's uh, I'm not quite sure if that's necessary. All the connectors look in good condition. No frayed wires. Yeah, okay. All right, well, let's um, test this read write head. So the, uh, the, the read write head here, actually, no, what am I doing? Let's go, skipping a step, let's have a look at the head itself. We'll see if we can spot any dirt down there and give it a clean. So that head there, that little white box with the white stripe and the black dot in the middle, that's the read write head. Now it looks clean. It doesn't look like we're gonna have any issue from that. But what I'll do is it is an easy change is we'll just get a little bit of uh, alcohol on our cotton tip, cotton swab, and just clean that off. So I'm just rubbing the alcohol over the surface and I'll flip over the other side to get the uh, dirt up, any dirt that may be there. Just suck that up. So, I mean, the cotton swab came up Pff, clean. Like there's, there's not going to be anything there. However, Worth a shot, let's give it a try. So like I said, this is where you need to be very careful. I am putting mains voltage into an exposed circuit board here, so be aware. Put our test disk back in, and fire all this up again. So I'm going to stay very far away from uh, this board now. Right. Let's run that alignment check again. Space. Bangs against the end, and then it starts reading forward. But uh, oh, well, we've got different information now. We're showing stuck on track one, even though you can definitely see that it is advancing the track. So the stepper motor is working well to move the read ride head forward and back. But uh, we're definitely not getting any data through. I wonder what happens if we unplug the head in the middle of that. No change. So it's as if the read write head is not actually there and providing information. So I'm leaning more towards a dead read write head for this drive. Yeah, I don't think I need to worry about the rest of this, so let's power that off. Unplug you. Uh, get that disc out, and let's take a look. Let's actually test this head now that we've got it there. So what we can do with that, we just unplug that from the board and we'll try to get this somewhere stable. Actually, wedge it between the. Yeah, there we go. All right. And what we do is we can bring in our multimeter. Just wedge that up there so you can see, and we'll put the multimeter into ohms mode. Now, what we're expecting here is the the read write head in here is actually well, it's a magnetic coil, uh, and I believe it has two sides with a center tap, or three. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll pop up a little diagram from the uh, the diagnostic manual here. But realistically, you want to look for the black or the white. It's black here, but it's usually white, is the center tap. And then measure that to the some of the other pins. So the black here, the center tap to the, the blue. And you, what you're looking for here is somewhere around 10 to 30 ohms. And I mean ohms, not kilo ohms, ohms. So here, the center tap to the blue, we're getting 13 ohms. So if we go from the center tap to the yellow, now you're down to 14 ohms, so that's pretty good. Now we'll go from the center tap over to the red one. Ah, there it is. So now we're getting 14.8 kilo ohms. So, what that means, down underneath this read route head, I'll, I'll see if I can find a photo from you because I'm not really keen to do the effort in pulling this one apart. But uh, there are, the, the coils are in parallel, I want to say top of my head. Don't quote me on that, might be wrong, but it's either parallel or series. Either way, the coils are connected in with a resistor that uh, brings their impedance to the right value for the uh, the amplifier on this board to, to deal with. 
and if that coil goes open, you just get the the the, uh, the resistance of the the resistor and the circuitry. So that should definitely be. I believe the the coil to or sorry the red to the blue should be 30 ohms. So yeah, we're still getting that 14k. So yeah, that red lead that's uh, our open open coil. Uh, yeah, so that's that's a dead read right head. Um, it's not something I can typically fix. These read right heads are potted in silicon, um, and even if I was able to get the silicon out cleanly, the it's such a tiny little winding of, of, of wires. I don't have the equipment. Some maybe some old school uh, tape deck maintenance guy could do that. Uh, that's outside my uh, my uh, expertise level. Um, so I'm going to need to get a Mitsumi D500 read right head. Um, I do have some spare uh, 1541 uh, two disk drives, and I know some of them some of them came with the D500 head. So I may see if I can pull a, pull a couple apart and um, see if any of those are working. I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure. I've, I actually I do have some that have working heads, but not working boards. Well, theoretically working heads. I haven't tested them fully, but uh, yeah. Anyway, if they've got the D500, I might just be able to scavenge one of their heads from from those. If not, I'll have to uh, source one online. Uh, yeah. So that's going to be that for now. Uh, yeah, I'm off to find some parts. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That's how we can diagnose the, uh, a bung head on, uh, 1541C. Okay. I'm back. I have a new replacement, uh, Mitsumi head out of a donor, uh, D500 drive. Uh, this te head is tested and working correctly. That one had a uh, dud CPU in the drive and I'm not at the point where I want to be replacing that, but uh, this is the drive unit out of the uh, case and the main case out of the actual plastic case. So at this point what I'm going to do is be pulling the drive head here out uh, and replacing it with this one and then we'll probably need to give it a head alignment and test how it works. So uh, first and foremost, what we need to do is remove the, the saddle here that holds the drive head. So what we do there is just these two screws, holding it in place, crack those loose. Just be very careful with this one, because as soon as it comes loose, this entire saddle just is loosey-goosey there. Uh, what we also will need to do is crack, uh, cut this, um, cable tie <clears throat> and ideally being very careful not to cut the any existing wires and we will want to replace that cable tie before we button this girl up so there's that cable tie out and there's our drive head so now what we can do is we can just lift this out very gently we just want to make sure it clears that and then what I like to do is just pivot it 90 degrees until it clears the head and then you can just slide that straight out easy now what we need to do is remove these two uh, retaining clips that hold the uh, drive pins or slides for the head itself. Okay, that should come off with a little bit of magnetic screwdriver action. And before I want to do that, I forgot one step, which is unscrew the drive head from the stepper motor. So this screw holds that in place there. There we go. Now, take this screw out. You need to magnetize that screwdriver and just remember to re just be very careful that you don't lose this little, see that little plate on there? That's just kind of locks that in there. So just be very careful not to lose that. And then we'll remove the second saddle. and the head should be free to remove now so the last thing to do is just we might actually use a pair of tweezers for this it's a little bit tricky just unseat that spring and that should be 
fully removed head. So now we can unslide those out. And there's our old head. Cool. So see on the bottom there, you can see the, uh, the circuit board. It's got some resistors and Sigazina diodes. And then that's the head right there. Nice and clean, but not working. Um, just having a quick look as well. Just to see if any of those wires are actually broken, but they do all actually be, appear to be in good health. So the the issue would actually be internally in in internal to the the head windings of the uh, the coils. Okay, got our new head. Let's pop one of these pins through that hole there, and the other one just slots in on the side here. So we can pop that down like that, and then the band here just needs to go up through that gap there, and this side up through there. Made that look a lot less elegant than it needed to be. There we are. Head is in. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I always clamp these down before bothering to uh, reattach the spring. Just makes it a lot easier. just before that I just verify that moves back and forth easily so that, again there's still no loop on those um, bars but we'll get there now what we need to do here the, uh, the spring always has a way that it goes and the long way always faces the back of the drive and the short way goes up to the top so it should have a hole there feed that through there and then holding on to this side and extend that out Oops. a little bit fiddly there we go now, what you'll need to do here is align this hole with the screw hole. So, what I'm going to do there is just use my thumb to hold onto the uh, the step ahead here and move the head itself manually back and forth until that screw is roughly centered. So you can see there, roughly in the right position. So now, I'm going to place on the mounting screw with its little retaining plate. Now making sure that the retaining plate is facing lengthwise up and down when you screw it in. Okay. And then let's tighten that all the way up. Okay. And now what we need to do is just put the sled back in. So, same as before, but in backwards. We feed the cable through. Have it at a 90 degree angle to its actual alignment. Lift the legs there. Make sure the cable's in the right spot. And feed it back through. Now this one also needs to make sure that the tab here is above this tab, and that tab is underneath, like so. And we can screw that back in. And one thing you'll also need to do here is just make sure that's properly aligned and in the right spot. Again, roughly centered. I just do that by eye, I don't really have any alignment guides for it. 
and then we'll properly tighten that all the way down. Now I'll just manually make sure that that head is moving. Feels good. Drive still closes and opens. And it's moving while it's closing and open. Beautiful. Now I've made a mistake here. Forgot to uh, grease those lines, but um, what I'll do is I'll do that quickly and then I'll get this back into a position where we can test it. Okay, we're back. The drive mechanism with the replaced head is in place. I've got it all wired back in. Um, now what I'm going to do here is power it on, but before I do that, just as before, again, I simply express that anyone that wants to try to do this heed a lot of caution. Right here is incoming mains voltage, and this is now in an un unprotected case. There's nothing to stop me from jabbing my fingers in there and getting exposed to potentially dangerous voltages. So I do this because I've done it before and I know what, I, what the dangers are. Heed caution. That's all I'm going to say now. So here we go. Let's plug that in. We are now live, so let's turn that on. Drive spinning still. It's moving the head. Good. All right, initialized fine. So let's power on our Commodore. Okay. Sounds good. Let's do an alignment check straight off the bat. This is where we're probably going to have to make our alignment. Oh. Yeah. All right, so yeah, we are super out of alignment. Okay, so that require us to just crack the screws on the bottom of the... It's actually pretty good on alignment, it's just slightly off, so shouldn't need too much. Hey folks, I just wanted to pause here for a minute to actually go into the head alignment process I'm about to run through. So what I'm using here is an alignment check program distributed on the Commodore 64 car diagnostics cartridge by worldofjanny.com, and I'll provide a link to that below. Pretty much what it does is instructs the drive to seek to a specific track and then attempts to read that track and determine if it is on target. Uh, and also how closely on target it is. So the first column here is the track that it's trying to read and the second column is the track that it has read. And these two numbers need to always match. The third column is how well the drive is able to read data from that track and this should pretty much always be 100%. The final column, the fourth column there, is how far between the target track and the previous or following track it actually is, and which is ideally as close to zero as possible, but this can fluctuate even a bit on a healthy drive. So the real magic here is how the drive actually knows where it's reading. So when a disk is formatted for a Commodore 64, it's typically broken down into 35 tracks leading from the outside at track 1 into the center at track 35. The outer tracks 1 through 17 have 21 sectors, which decrease gradually down to 17 sectors for tracks 31 through 35. Uh, there are other formats used, but this is the main Commodore 64 one. Now each track has a track header, and each sector has a sector header, and part of the data contained in all of those headers is the exact track that it has been written to. This means that at any given point, the drive can read whatever header the drive head happens to be over and know where on the disk it is currently positioned over. This also means that by using this uh, to set the alignment on this drive, I'm relying on the disk that I have here to have been formatted on a, another correctly aligned drive. Now, my main 1541 drive is in great health and has absolutely no problems reading disks, uh, and I can actually pass this alignment test with a factory manufactured disk perfectly. So I trust it for this purpose, but for absolutely perfect alignment, you really need to use a specially crafted alignment disk, which unfortunately I just don't have. Uh, now, typically it is rare for these 1541 drives to ever actually need a head alignment, unless in very specific circumstances, and well, replacing the head like we've done here is one of those circumstances. Now there's a fantastic uh, website called pagetable.com that has a uh, couple of pages on visualizing the actual disk contents from Commodore 1541 disks uh, that goes into this in a lot more detail, and I'll link that below, but um, yeah, for now, let's get back to the alignment. So, I'm not exactly making this obvious, but what I'm doing here is the stepper motor is held in by two screws here, and it can pivot, it can rotate, and all that, what that does is, actually it's a much better position, what that does is it allows you to adjust the, 
uh, uh, alignment of the stepper motor. So the head is controlled by that belt that we attached before, and this stepper motor just pushes or pulls that head back and forth, and this just allows you to do micro adjustments. What we'll do here is we'll just set it on loop. And while that's looping, it's completely out of alignment now. What we can do we loosen this up. Let's get that adjusted. And all we're looking for here is we're trying to get it as close to zero as possible. Ideally, all zeros in that last column. It looks like we might have actually gotten it already, so... Let's let that run through its uh, loop. The fact that this is actually now returning any data as well, um, obviously the, the new head is working fine in this drive too, so that's uh, it's an excellent result as is, just off straight off the bat. Okay, so a little bit there, it's not particularly happy on the top end. There we are. Even minute adjustments on this stepper motor can cause the head to change what it's reading. to start. Let's see, yeah, super out still, so. Much too far in the opposite direction. Okay, so now it's completely off track. It's reading one track too far. Let's kind of more about feel than anything. So we've got it on track. Tighten one of the screws so it doesn't move. We'll see how it goes on the next loop. It's always easier to get the tracks at the top of the head. 18 to 35 aligned, and then the 1 through 17 are the trickier stuff in my experience. Yeah, so it's still pretty far out there. Let's loosen that back up again. Okay, just about done with this project now. Uh, all of the capacitors, all the electrolytic capacitors have been replaced uh, with brand new high quality units, including down here on this board here. Um, the head has been replaced, so the drive head here, and the stepper motor for the head uh, alignment has been corrected. Um, we've cable tied the cables back in. Everything is good to go. So the last thing I want to do um, is just give it a test. So additionally one thing I'd like to do just before because I've changed all the capacitors and that includes the capacitors in the power phase I just want to check the speed calibration of the motor here and you can do that with this little uh, potentiometer right there. So what are we going to do is I'm going to fill up my Commodore with the World of Jani disk diagnostics cartridge in. Let's boot this guy up first. Pop our, our junk drive, oops, helps us put power to it. Put our junk disk in. Does the head check normally? Now we'll fire up our Commodore. Our Commodore and we will go to S for speed check. And what that does is it just runs the head up, and as you can see, there it is a little bit out, so it's just a touch too fast. So, what we can do very gently. Turn that a little bit to the left. Oh, no, you want to turn it to the right, actually. 
and then bring that down as close to 300 RPM as possible. Very gentle turns here. And there. 300, a little bit high still. Let's go just a touch more. Yeah, that looks good. 300, 300, plus minus one. No problem. All right. Okay, so that's passing over all the tests. So now what we'll do, we're gonna try this out. With my all time favorite, test drive. Oh yeah. See how we go. I love that sound. Ah, I love this intro. And then music comes in, the menu. Ah. Cool, okay, well, um, I can play test drive in a little bit, but uh, yeah, we have one fully repaired, replaced head, recapped, 1541C in excellent condition. Thanks for watching.